All right, welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I'm gonna teach you two questions you absolutely need to know before you take the next SATs. So question 22, assume X and Y are positive integers. If X squared plus 12X plus 35 is equal to 48, and Y squared plus 7Y plus 12 is equal to 30, what is the value of X plus Y? So I'm gonna solve each equation separately, right? I have this equation right here, X squared plus 12X plus 35 is equal to 48. Now I wanna create a quadratic, right? So how can I do that? I need one side to equal to zero. So which side do I want? I probably want this 48. So how do I get rid of a 48? I just subtract it from one side. So minus 48. If I do it on the right side, I must do it on the left side. Now doing so, I get x squared plus 12x. What's 35 minus 48? And that's going to be negative 13 is equal to zero. So looking familiar, we have a quadratic right here. And how do we solve? There's two ways. Either you can use the quadratic formula or you can do factoring, which in this case is possible. So I'm going to factor it. And what are the factors of 13? And it's going to be 13 and 1. That's it. So I have to use that to get positive 12. I know that 13 minus 1 is equal to 12. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do x and x. So I'm going to pick one to be the greater one, which is going to be plus. So I'm going to choose plus 13 and then minus 1 on the other side. You see how plus 13 times negative 1 is minus 13 and 13 minus 1 is 12. So that lines. And now I get x is equal to opposite of positive 13, which is negative 13 as well as the opposite of negative one, which is one. Now the question is saying that they're all positive, right? X and Y are positive integers. So it means that rules out negative 13. So it means that X is equal to one. Now I do the same thing for Y. So I do Y squared plus seven Y plus 12 is equal to 30. Now what's the first step? Similar to solving for X, I'm gonna subtract 30 on both sides to get zero on one side. Because on the right side, I get zero, 30 minus 30 is zero. On the left side, I get Y squared plus seven Y and then what's positive 12 minus 30? That's going to be negative 18 is equal to zero. Next, can I factor? I'm going to try that, right? So I'm going to do it y and y. Now, what multiplies to negative 18 and sums up to 7? I'm going to try 1 and 18. Does that work? 1 plus 18 is 19. 8, 1 minus 18 is negative 18, negative 17. That doesn't work. Let's try 2 and 9. Now, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. 2 minus 9 is 7. How about if I try the other way around? 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, and 9 minus 2 is 7. So that aligns. So it means my numbers are going to be positive 9 and negative 2. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18, and 9 minus 2 is positive 7. So that aligns. So it means it's perfect. Now, what are my values of y? They're going to be the opposite of what's right here. So opposite of plus 9 is negative 9. Opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Now, the question, remember, is asking for positive integer answers. So that rules out negative nine. So the value of X is one, the value of Y is two. Question's asking for X plus Y. One plus two is three. I mean, your answer has to be three. So this question requires a little bit of work as long as you know how to factorize and how to solve quadratics. If you don't know how to factorize, don't worry. You can use the quadratic formula, which is just X is equal to negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus four AC over two A. This method requires a little bit more work, but it's easier if you don't know how to factor, right? You just plug in the value of A, B, C into the, your quadratic, and you'll get the values of Y. Okay, so moving on, let's go to question 23. If X is greater than zero, which of the following is the graph of F of X to get a five minus X squared? Now looking at these graphs, what will be our graph, right? Looking at it, X has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that rules out C, right? Because I see that this part is going to be in the negative X. That rules it out. This part is in the negative X as well, right? Anywhere where it's passing this part to the left of this line, aka the X axis, is out. So I rule out this one and this one as well because it's on the left. I rule out these. So it's either going to be A or D. Now, there are two simple ways to do this. The first way is to know your graphs. If you know your graphs, you know that X squared looks like this right x squared no, looks more like this x squared looks like this now it's five minus x squared so i know that x squared is negative x squared it's going to be the opposite of this so it's going to look something like that right i'm going to reflect it across the y axis now i know that five minus it so i'm going to move it up by five because this is plus five so if i move it up by five i get this graph right here now the question saying that x has to be greater than or equal to zero so I rule out this part, meaning this part is my only answer, meaning your answer is D, right? But if you didn't know how to do that, how to make these transformations, another way to do it is to just use coordinates. If I know that the point 
one, right? I know point one, x is equal to one. What's the value of y? So I plug in one to this. So it's five minus one squared, which is four. So I get y is equal to four. So your coordinate should be one, four. Look at it, one, four. Okay. Now, another point I could choose is six. So if x is equal to six, what's the value of y? I get y is equal to, plug it in, five minus six squared, which is negative 31. Now, looking at these two graphs that are left, a and d, I see that when six, x is equal to six, y is equal to some positive number. Whereas in d, when x is equal to six, y is equal to some negative number down here, right? So it means d is gonna be my answer. So these are two questions you guys must understand. This one's geometry question or algebra two question. And this one is also an algebra two question. So thank you guys for watching and good luck on those SATs.